Hey guys, this is some huge news coming out of ESPN. I want some nasty. Are we having fun yet? All right, so I don't know if you guys heard, but apparently there's quite a few teams that's going to look to trade out of the first round, and that is that is great for us. Um, so we're going to talk about this before we do. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, clanthemerchfan.com, link in the description. If you order today or you know maybe a few days from now or however that looks. Uh, for you please be patient with me it's going to take take a while because i'm working on another batch right now um so just letting you know and you can get 10 percent off as well so promo code clan 10 and that's just you know leading up to the lottery because I, I mean not lottery i'm sorry the, the draft um because I, I just want to show a little bit of appreciation but anyways yeah you guys want to support link in the description or become a patron youtube member only two dollars per month all right diving into this enough of that uh so brian renhorse was actually the one that said this but I, I, I usually take what he has to say with a grain of salt, but I'm going to tell you why I believe it in a second. So it says here that the Portland Trailblazers, Houston Rockets, Detroit Pistons, and the Dallas Mavericks are looking to trade out of the first round um, in the draft in just a few days. And the reason why I do believe this is because, and I didn't talk about this before, but a few days ago, uh, Keith Smith actually reported this. Talking to front office folks, players, and agents, it feels like this is shaping up to be one of those trade heavy major reset summers for the NBA. Poor free agent class, looming super, super tax concerns, and a whole bunch of teams thinking, why can't we win it? Um, uh, could lead to a lot of trades. So it, it, yes, this is going to be a wild summer, one of those really wild summers. And when you have teams like uh, the Denver Nuggets doing it the right way, the Spurs way, and winning the championship, you kind of sit back and you're like, oh, I need to reevaluate myself. You know, I need to reevaluate my players. I need to reevaluate uh, what direction we're going in. And it seems like that is uh, what's going on here. So we'll watch this clip. I don't know if I have to cut it out or not, because YouTube copyright. So if it's cut out, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, but you, you can find it here from Aaron Johnson, uh, NBA on, on Twitter. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I'll give you my thoughts on some players that I think the Spurs should go after. Um, and if this even makes sense to me for, for these teams perspective towards the NBA trade or the NBA uh, draft next week. We could see three or four picks down in the top 10 get traded. Watch for their Portland at number three, looking to add the people around Dame Willard. Houston at four has indicated they might be interested in moving. Detroit at five and uh, Dallas at number 10. And nobody's really sure what Charlotte's going to do at number two with the player they're going to draft. So we could have action on draft night. All right. So let me go ahead and talk about that. So here we go. So starting off with the Portland Trailblazers, we talked about this enough. I don't think I have to really go into it too much. And he already mentioned it. Yes, they want to build around uh, Dame. Okay, they, they want to get some win now talent. So one potential thing is uh, maybe there's a lot of madness going over with the Raptors right now, going on with the Raptors. And I know they're going to have to rebuild soon. So maybe something like sending them um, uh, Siakam and maybe we can throw in some picks uh, for, for the Raptors. Um, and, and then maybe we can make something happen and we get the third overall pick, which would be insane, uh, especially with Charlotte Hornets. Like he said, don't really know what they're going to do, but I will be shocked at this point if they don't just go with Scoot. It just, it, I know some people say it doesn't make sense, but I think it does. I don't know if you go for best fit in, in this situation. I, I don't know. He's so good. So I, I just don't know if I would I would take that chance. But but Brandon Miller is great too. He could be a Paul George type player. So it, it, you don't really lose there. Um, but moving on, we know about Portland. We talked about them enough. Houston Rockets. That actually shocks me a little bit because and we'll look at the players in a minute. But there's a lot of good players left. So I, I'm a little shocked that Houston Rockets are going to go ahead and, and and try to trade that away. I, I it's just a little weird to me. Uh, Detroit Pistons, kind of the same thing. I mean, you tank this entire season for this. At the fifth spot, you're still going to have some really good talent. Um, I know it was all for Wimby. Okay, maybe this is one of those Wimby or Bust situations for those two teams, but it's just strange to me. Um, Dallas Mavericks makes complete sense, and, you know, he kind of explained that. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this. Mock draft. Okay, so these are some of the players, or not some of the players. These are all the players that's going to be available more than likely in the lottery. Maybe a couple will get kicked out. Maybe Keontae George get kicked out. I'm not sure. Um, but let me go ahead and tell you how I feel about the players that will be left if the Spurs were to trade up. Now, obviously, if it's the Portland Trailblazers, Scoot, you don't even hesitate. You go after Scoot if we could. That would be insane. Scoot and Wimby. That, that wouldn't even be fair. The NBA should not allow that. <laughs> but, but I'm for it. All right, so here's some of the players that I want to talk about. So we'll start with Amen Thompson. So I know a lot of Spurs fans are huge on him. Me personally, 
I'm not the biggest Eamon Thompson fan. I actually like his brother a little bit more. But I will say this. Out of all the players that are available uh, in this draft, or in, in the in the lottery, that is, I, I do think that he has the most potential after Scoot. Like, like by far. I, I really like Cam Whitmore. But overall, you, we're talking about raw athletic ability. Uh, his first step is absolutely ridiculous. Athleticism is, is, is insane. So I, I do understand where people are coming from with their with that and yeah his jump shot isn't the best but it's not like everyone in this you know draft jump shot is is perfect you know uh his brothers isn't that great um your boy wait, where is he uh not kind Ke keontae george his is great anthony black that is uh anthony blacks isn't the best so it, it, it it's it's okay you know it's something that you can work on something you can develop and him and his brother have very similar to jump shots so uh, they, they, they're going to have to work on it, but uh, raw athletic ability, I get it, but that is not a player that I want, to be honest with you. I mean, he, he makes quite a few mistakes defensively. I think he doesn't really show a lot of effort, and that's something that really messes with me. Um, and with him having those athletic tools, I feel like he should be able to, uh, I don't know, move laterally, not give up on plays. And a lot of times it seems like that that's what he does. But his brother, however, uh, Usar, uh, Usar, I think that he is a better package overall. Um, he might not have the elite of a first step as his brother, but he's still stupid athletic. Um, they average the same amount of assists. He's still a really good playmaker um, and he plays really good defense and he's slightly, he's slightly a little bit more sturdy. Um, I think, but yeah, he plays more defense. He utilizes his tools a little bit better than Amen. So, uh, Amen, sorry. So, just overall, I, I like Usar. So, if we're looking at this draft and you want to know who's my number one, it will be Usar. Okay, Usar will be the number one that I go after. Second would be Amen. So, if the if uh, uh, Amen Thompson is on the board, that's probably the second guy I go after, even though he's not my favorite by any means. But I do see that his potential is just so high; it's, it's hard not to. Um, thirdly, now this is the guy that I really, really, really would like is Kaysen, Kaysen Wallace. Um, some people have called him like a mini, uh, Kawhi Leonard, which I definitely see it. And I just like him overall, um, his effort, his defense, uh, just, it, just everything about him. You need to go look up some highlights of this, this kid. He's, he's really good. Um, so that will probably be my third right there. Uh, as far as the fourth player that I would go after, um, it, more than likely, I'm gonna have to go with Keontae George. Um, I don't think I have any clips of Keontae. Yeah, I don't have any clips of Keontae George here. But I'm gonna go with Keontae George only because he is a player. While I, I know some people say, "Dude, he's only six four. He plays shooting guard at Baylor." It's like, eh. if if you actually like pay attention to him, he is a modern guard. Like when he, when we talk about shooting the lights out, uh, scoring off the dribble. He can do all of that. He doesn't need much space at all. He can create his own shot. Now, he's a little flaky defensively sometimes. Um, his decision-making is a little rough. Like, if a if a de defender gets a little too close, okay, a little too close to comfort, sometimes he can uh, drive in and force shots and, and things like that. But overall, I really do like him. I like his scoring potential. Now, don't get me wrong, and I've said this many of times. Honestly, where do they even have my boy at? Uh... Oh, they have oh they have him in the second round okay so this is what i was going to say if the spurs are planning to get like a turquavian smith in the second round um i i think i'm comfortable with skipping out on keontae george now i'm not saying look keontae george has way more upside or a little bit more upside than turquavian smith for sure but if we can get turquavian smith i, I think that you can manage to to decide uh, on someone else there now this is the last player that i think that the spurs should go after uh, in the lottery, and that would be dun, 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 Anthony <clears throat> Black. I really like him overall. I think that he utilizes his uh, strength fairly well. Good defender, good playmaker. The only thing that he struggles with, like I said, um, similar to the Thompson twins, is is shooting at times. Um, but overall, I think that he is a really good uh, player to to try to invest in. And he just comes across like the way that he plays, his craftiness at times. He he just comes across as a spur. And I think that he will play really well uh, with Wimbayama. Um, pretty good with the pick and roll as well. Him and, honestly, him and um, uh, Keontae George are good in the pick and roll uh, game. But yeah, just overall, I think that that's, that's what I would go with there. So you guys just let me know what you think. Uh, I know I got a little rambly there, but just to, you know, friendly reminder, uh, I would go with Usar. I would go with then Eamon. Now I'll go with Kaysen. 
Keontae, and then I'll go with Anthony Black if the Spurs can get those. But I guarantee, I mean, they're going to be available if the Spurs can get even 10. One of those players would be available. So, yeah, good stuff. Great stuff. Now, I guess the question would be, would the freaking Dallas Mavericks even make a deal with us? Probably not. I don't know. But anyways, I'll give it to you guys later. Uh, you know how to support the channel. And uh, deuces.